Welcome to Nazareth Christian Fellowship, a growing church located in the Ocean Hill section of Brooklyn, New York. Thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning online worship experience. On behalf of our pastor, Overseer Aurelia Jamai, we pray that as you watch, you will feel the transforming power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The next few minutes will be a time of worship, word, and witness. If you wish to be a blessing to this ministry, we have several ways in which you can give. Online at ncfellowship.net. Cash app, our tag is grow at NCF. Text to give at 718-215-9580 or via our mobile app. We thank you for your generous giving. Gather your family and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Christian Fellowship, wherever you may be, your kitchen table, your car, Africa, London, wherever in the world you may be, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us in this worship experience. We pray that as we are here in his presence, that you feel the presence of God wherever you may be. So this morning, we're talking about the joy, the joy of the Lord. He is our strength. He's giving us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. My God, we thank you for your joy. We thank you for giving us joy this thank morning. You, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. The song says there's beauty in my brokenness. Some of you have been broken, but there's beauty in your brokenness. Ah, Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. There's beauty in my brokenness. got true love instead of pain there's freedom though you've captured me I've got joy instead of mourning there's beauty there's beauty in my brokenness I've got true love instead of pain there's freedom though you've me. I've got joy instead of mourning, cause you give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. So there's beauty, there's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom, though you captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. You give me joy down deep in my soul. been so free, caught in your love for me. I never felt 
Thank you for your joy, oh God. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you, oh God, even no matter what's going on in this life, oh God, you keep making a way after making a way after yes, a way Lord. after yes, a way, Lord. God. Yes, you just keep yes, making Lord. ways yes, for Lord. us, oh yes, God. Lord. Over and over again, time and time again, oh God. We're so grateful. And we thank you so much, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test, but holding on to faith, you know best. Nothing catches you by surprise. You've got this figured out. You're watching us now, oh, and when it looks as if we can't win, God, you're right to sing, you have to sing your arms and step in, everything we need, everything we need to supply. And now we know that you made a way When our backs were against the wall When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here And we're standing here Holy 
We're the Taylor family, and we're here to share with you how we stay connected all the way from Wilmington, North Carolina, here at the beautiful Battleship, North Carolina. I'm Pastor Larry Taylor. This is my wife, Minister Doris Taylor. This is my, my mega star, Brittany Taylor, and my grandson, Jojo, sharing with you all the way from Brooklyn, North National Christian Fellowship family, where Overseer Jamal is our senior pastor. Now, we're here in North Carolina, although we're a long way from Brooklyn, we stay connected. Now, Minister Taylor stays connected Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays with the intercessory prayer team, which is led by Minister Scott. Now, on, on Wednesday, they meet every morning at 5 a.m. praying for the saints of God, okay? Myself, I meet every Thursday morning, continuing the legacy of our late Bishop Roberta Jamont, the spiritual Iron Man Brotherhood, every Thursday at 6 a.m., sharing with the brothers an encouraging word to moving forth in the kingdom. And like I said, Brittany is our media expert, taking out in the leadership of our producer and, and executive media expert, Deacon Johnson, and his beautiful wife, Jackie Johnson Deacon. And we continue on with our staying connected. So here from Wilmington, North Carolina, to you in New York City, we want to say stay connected through prayer, through social media, through tweet, however, by Facebook, Reach out, pray for one another, continue to hold up the kingdom. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Bye-bye. Join us for today's message, God Will Take Care of You, taken from the book of Jude, verses 24 and 25, from our pastor, Overseer Araya Jamal. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Happy New Year. This is the first Sunday in the year 2021, in the 21st century, and we are just delighted that you crossed over and you made it into a new year with us. So we thank the Lord today, and we just want to lift up holy hands and bless the Lord. We want to say, God, thank you. Thank you for a new year. Thank you for a new theme. Thank you for life. Thank you for family. Thank you for resources. Thank you for the things that you're about to do in our lives. We just want to give you the praise. We just want to give you the thanks. Listen, I have to take time out to tell God thank you because I made it into a new year. And while you're sitting there, while you're watching us, I am so delighted that God allowed you and preserved you in spite of everything that we went through in 2020. You're still here. So welcome to Nazareth Christian Fellowship. My name is Overseer Aurelia Jama, And as always, it's a joy to worship with you. I am so glad that you are worshiping with me and you are worshiping our God most high. Our God will cause us to triumph in this 2021 year. Listen, listen, we have uh, a theme this year and our theme this year is restart. And we're not going to look back at yesterday, but we're going to look forward. So we have hope, and this hope that we have is going to cause us to restart and look forward. It's good to see you, church. Deacon Bino, my God, it's always a joy. Sister Tanisha, it's a joy. Church, get in the chat room and talk to me as the word of God is being preached. We want to stay connected. We stayed connected last year, and this year we'll stay connected once again. I just want to remind you and I just want to say thank you for your giving, those of us who joined in and gave us that special 2020 offering, I want 2021 offering, I want to encourage you to go online, to go to Cash App, to go to our text and give that two 2021 offering, that one 2021 offering, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, 2021, give unto the Lord. So we bless the Lord for you. I have a word from the Lord this morning, and I want to share it with you. And um, I, I'm, I'm limited in time, and I'm going to stay within my time frame because today is the first Sunday of the year, and it's also our communion Sunday. And so may I remind you, we don't do communion online. We do it on Zoom. So those of you who don't have the number, you might connect with someone else and get our Zoom number and make sure that you get your communion, uh, you get everything ready, and we will do live communion on Zoom. This morning I have a word and it's taken from the book of Jude 24, 25, verse 24 and verse 25. 
Here begins the reading of God's word. I'm in the King James Version, and it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Thus far the scripture. Father, we thank you this morning for your amazing grace. Lord, you've kept us. You've watched over us. And Lord, we thank you because in 2021, you will keep us and you will keep us from falling. You will preserve us. And more than anything, you are God, our Savior, God, our Keeper, God, our Redeemer. You are the living one. You are the light of the world and you are our bread of life. And thank you even now that this word bless the hearer in Jesus name. Amen. This morning, I want to entitle this word. God will take care of you. And you need to know this in 2021 because we had a lot of concerns in 2020 and we're hearing so much about what's about to happen and what will happen. But as a believer, as a person in Christ, you need to know that God will take care of you. My dad, the late Bishop Harold L. Joseph, had some quotes that he loved to repeat. And he especially repeated them when he was preaching. Typically, he would say things like, every tub has to stand on its own body. He had also another one where he said, it will come to pass. In other words, it must come, but it will pass. Then he also said, it's tight, but it's right. Then he say things like, some of you look like you have been sucking on lemon juice. Then he'd tell you straight up, holiness or hell. He'd tell you, let the door hit your back. And then if you were messing around, he'd tell you things like, you're going to bust hell with your eyes wide open. <laughs> yes, we're purely Pentecostal, we're truly Pentecostal. And my dad used to preach holiness or hell. And those of us that sat under his teaching, listen, he had another one. He always said the same finger that you point with, the thumb is pointing back at you. And, 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 and another one that he had, uh, 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 there's so many quotes, and those of us that sat under him, we had a way that we would finish the sentence because we always knew what he was about to say. And if you sat under the ministry of Bishop Harold L. Joseph, you know what I'm talking about. We were, he laid a foundation in our, in our lives, and he would repeat, he would rehearse the word of the Lord with us. And you know, he taught us by repetition. And one thing he stood for was the gospel of truth and the word of the living God. We all love to hear him sing the doxology. Now, that's an experience because he was so animated and he would praise God from whom, enough of my singing, all blessings flow. And then he pronounced the benediction. And we memorized the benediction because as he pronounced it, we said it with him. And one of the benedictions he would use comes from Jude 24 and 25. He pronounced the benediction with great emphasis. And today I would like to let you know the importance of those two verses. As I studied the text, I realized the preserving power and the importance of blessing and especially the need for a priestly blessing. The word benediction, it comes from the Latin word bene, well and decide to speak. To those of you who are Spanish speaking, we hear the word bien and the word decide, which in English means to speak well. A benediction is an act of pronouncing a blessing. It's an invocation of divine blessings. Usually it is said at the end of the service. And what it does, it affirms God's ability and his grace to keep his people. You say, why are you talking about the benediction and it's the beginning, it's the opening service of the year? Well, I want to say that you need to know that in the midst of this pandemic, God will take care of you. 
when Jude wrote this one chapter, he was speaking of the things that were going on in the church. And Jude was the brother of James and half-brother of Jesus. He wrote this epistle to them who are sanctified, preserved, and called. He was exhorting the people of God to contend for the faith, for there was false teaching and immorality running rampant in Christianity. He was addressing the apostates and the apostasy that was taking place in the church. Sounds familiar. Apostates are those who forsake their religion. And we have many today who are walking away from the truth of God. And you have to be aware because Jude addressed those who crept away unnoticed and infiltrated the church. They denied Jesus as Lord and Master. They defiled the flesh, rejected authority, and reviled angelic majesties. There were grumblers, fault finders, followers after their own lust, arrogant, and seeking for their own gain by flattery. They were divisive, and they are this divisive. Watch those who cause the vision amongst you. They were worldly and devoid of the Spirit of God. Regardless of how smooth their words or enticing their teaching, their true character was deceptive and destructive. Be careful. Be careful who speaks into your ear. Be careful as you're scrolling through social media and you're looking for a church. Listen carefully. Be very, very discerning and make sure they're preaching Christ and him crucified. We are seeing much of this happening in this hour. People are preaching everything else but Jesus Christ. And we need to preach that he came, that he died, that he rose, and that he's coming back again. And don't be deceived. God is coming back for a church, and he's coming back for his bride. And there are wolves in sheep's clothing that are deceiving, that are deceptive, that are causing an apostasy, a state of apostasy in the church of the living God. Listen, don't have itchy ears. Hear the word of the Lord. The epistle that Jude wrote addressed the seduction of Christianity, which is also on the rise. Our culture, the culture that we live in, tolerates and promotes immorality. It's okay. I'm okay if you're okay. And sin is rampant right in the church. We don't have to leave our homes to sin anymore. We can sit at our computer or sit with our devices and have a good time. We can go into any kind of chat room and have a good time. But let me just tell you this. Sin is still sin. I don't care how you dress it up. As my dad used to say, you can dress up the truth, but it's still a lie. Hmm. With all the distractions, with all that is happening, all that we see going on in the world, we need God to keep us. We've got to stay close to him in the South. How do you stay close to God? God is a God with sustaining power. He takes care of his own. I don't want you to worry. I just want you to stay close to God. Stay in the word of God. This Sunday, this first Sunday, January 3rd, 2021, get into the word of God. Stay in the presence of the living God. And why? Because he's able now, now in this hour, he's able, he's accessible unto him. You can access God and he is able to keep you. He is able. He's able to keep you from falling. He will prevent you from falling. In other translations, when you look at it, the word used is not falling, but stumbling. And the word stumbling is translated from the Greek word, which is used in a literal sense and describes a sure-footed horse that does not stumble. It refers to a good man who does not fall into error. And Psalms 121 and 3 tells us, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. 
He that keepeth thee will not slumber. God is not asleep. Don't think that God doesn't see what's going on. As my dad used to say, God is not nervous, neither is he out of control. There are two things, two critical things that the Lord will do to us and do for us in this 2021. I want to tell you that he will preserve you and he will present you. The one who chose you and saved you will keep you. And let's look at what the word preserve means. Go to verse 24. Now to him who's able to keep you from stumbling, just that phrase to him who's able to keep you from stumbling, that is telling us that in this hour, God is going to prevent you from falling apart. He is able to to do it. You say, Pastor, okay, I'm glad for that. But then the next question is, does he want to preserve you? With all that is going on, with all the losses that we have experienced, with everything that has come our way, I lost my husband. I lost your pastor. I lost our shepherd. I lost your friend. I lost your brother. I lost your loved one. But God is my keeper. God is taking care of me and God will take care of you. Listen, listen. God in this hour, fear not. With all the news that we hear, you have to know in whom you believe and you have to be persuaded that he is able to keep you against that day. Until that time comes, you have to be confident you have to trust in God. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. But we will remember who our God, the name of our God. We will remember who our God is. Now to him who's able to keep you. And that word keep in Greek is to guard. And God guards over his people. It's a military word there. He guards, he watches over. It's different from the word keep used back in verse 21, which means to hold or possess. He's able to watch over us, to guard us. He stands guard over us. He's at his post. We are in safe custody while under assault. Even while every activity is taking place, in the world globally, we are being protected by God. And that's what that word means, that he's guarding us. The word of God says he will give his angels charge over us to keep us, lest we dash our foot against a stone. And the angels of the Lord are encamped round about you to keep you in all your ways. Listen, don't fear. Don't fear. Don't fear. Listen, and, 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 then, and then the Bible talks about a falling away and apostasy. It's the only place in the Bible that we see that word, where that word is used, but God keeps us. He keeps us from falling. He keeps us, he keeps us in the midst of everything that we see, in the midst of this um, pandemic. Listen, don't lose your faith. Don't lose hope in God. doesn't matter what you hear. Stand, stand and see the salvation of God. God is still in charge. You can't fall away because he will keep you from becoming an apostate. What the benediction does for us, the benediction, it dispels fear. The Lord is my light and my salvation. This is what the Bible says. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I? be afraid. The benediction, what it does for us, it gives us hope for the future. Listen, we rejoice in hope. We are patient in tribulation and we continue in instant prayer. And 2021 is here. And saints, my God, we endured hardness in 2020 like a good soldier of cross. Christ. And those of you who are watching, you made it over. My God, God kept you. God kept your mind. There were times when you thought, oh, I'm not going to make it. There were times when you wondered about what tomorrow holds. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my head. And the same God that holds
holds my hand is holding your hand. You're going to make it through this year of 2021. I want you to know that God is going to keep you. God will take care of you. You are covered by the blood. Listen, start off this year. Get the oil. Anoint yourself. Anoint the doors. Anoint the portals. Anoint every one of your children. Go through your house. Plead the blood. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Listen, God is keeping you. God will keep you. Circumstances and, and, situ circumstances and situations have rocked your world, but God is keeping you. Some of us thought that we wouldn't, it wouldn't happen to us. Ah, some of us had some great losses. Some of us lost our jobs. We lost family members, but God is still giving us the strength. God is still keeping us. In the midst of it all, the God that I serve is a God of peace, a God who fights for his children. Oh, he is Jehovah Shalom. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is Jehovah Sabbath. He is God. And all this chaos and insanity, God is still keeping us. He preserves us. We are preserved in Jesus Christ. Jude wants us to know that even in the darkest days, when a falling away seems to be happening, we can rest in the fact that God protects his children. He is God. And Jude describes him as the very creator of life, the very God of gods, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made. He is savior. He is our deliverer. He is my shepherd. I don't want. He is Jesus. This is a name above all names. And he has given him a name above every name that every knee shall bow at the very sound of his name. He is our God. Jesus is a name that the son wore while he was physically here on earth. The name Jesus means Jehovah is Savior. He is Christ. He is the anointed one. The name Christ identifies him. Jesus as the Messiah. He is Lord. That means that he is a supreme authority. He's a God that has given us authority. We have authority here on this earth. This God who possesses all power, majesty, and authority chooses to have a relationship with us. Isn't that awesome? He chooses us. He, choose, he chose you. You are chosen. God chose you and he will keep you. He created us and he redeemed us. He is coming back again. And one day we will live with him forever. And we should love him simply because of who he is. With all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. And we are living in days when people are falling away, but may I encourage you, don't fall away from God. Fall in love with him. I declare, God has pronounced a benediction on you. The God that brought you this far, this is the same God who will keep you. He will keep you and he will preserve you. To all of you, that are essential workers. To all of you working in hospitals, in nursing homes, in clinics, to those of you who serve the general public, you drive buses, you drive trains, to those of you who work in grocery stores, my God, you drive trucks and deliveries, FedEx, UPS, all the postal, the mail, you do all those things. I want to let you know, fear not. We are praying for you this morning. I know that this church prays for you. My God, those of you who are frontline and taking care of COVID patients, we pray that the Spirit of God would go in the room. And even as you, my God, help those patients that God will preserve you, God will keep you, and that the blood of Jesus, my God, would cover you. And fear not once again, for God will take care of you. Listen, there's a songwriter that wrote a song that says, be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Through every day, or all the years, God will take care of you. And know that God 
will take care of you. God will take care of you. That's my message this morning. That God will take care of you. He promised. And his word is yea and amen. In 2021, as you step out, step out, knowing that the Lord will preserve you, that he will keep you from falling, and that he's able to present you faultless before the throne of his glory to the only wise God, our Savior. To him be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. May the Lord bless you. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, may I invite you to invite him into your heart. All you have to do is confess with your mouth that he died for you. And believe in your heart that you can be saved. That's all it takes. Accept, believe, and confess. We're not asking you to join the church. We're just asking you to join Jesus. To those of you out there that know Jesus, I just want to encourage you. Stay under the blood. Stay under the umbrella of safety. And stay in the heart of God. We pray that you were blessed by today's word. If you need prayer, you may call us at 855-536-6688 or send an email to prayer at ncfellowship.net. Here at Nazareth, we have several ways for you to give. Online at ncfellowship.net, Cash App, our tags grow at NCF. Via our mobile app, search for Nazareth Christian Fellowship and you may text to give to 718-215-9580. Be sure to visit our website at www.ncfellowship.net to stay informed of our current events. Once again, thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning worship experience here at Nazareth Christian Fellowship. Come see what great things the Lord is doing.